Welcome to Aero Engineering 210 Lesson 5. Today's lesson is about the hydrostatic equation in the standard atmosphere. These are the lesson outcomes for this lesson. Please hit escape and take a moment to review these outcomes. And then when you're ready to resume, just hit the slideshow button again. We'll begin by talking about why we even need a standard atmosphere and then we'll develop that standard atmosphere by uh, first uh, talking about the hydrostatic equation and uh, an example application of that, the manometry equation, and then another application which is the actual standard atmosphere. And then we'll talk about how the standard atmosphere is used in uh, altimetry. So, why do we need a standard atmosphere? Well, uh, we're talking about designing airplanes in our uh, optimization or uh, development loop. We have a step that's called analysis. And in analysis, we evaluate our design against the customer's requirements. Those requirements and our analysis methods need to be reference to a particular set of atmospheric conditions uh, because as shown here in this image three of the four forces thrust lift and drag that primarily determine the performance and uh, behavior of an aircraft depend on the four fundamental flow properties pressure temperature density and velocity the only one that doesn't depend on that is weight, which only depends on the acceleration of gravity and the mass of the aircraft. So if we're going to compare two airplanes, or if we're going to compare an aircraft to a previous iteration of its configuration, uh, and if we're going to evaluate that aircraft against customers' requirements, we have to know specifically what atmospheric conditions we're going to use. We saw before that customers' requirements are often specified as uh, a certain Mach number or a certain climb capability at a certain altitude. And uh, if we don't know what the flow properties are at that altitude, or if we don't standardize them, then uh, our analysis will be flawed. And we won't be able to accurately compare one design to another. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we have three of the four flow properties, pressure, temperature, and density, that vary with altitude in the standard atmosphere, so we have to model that. We have to model a standard atmospheric variation of those properties for uh, accurate analysis and comparisons. So we start with a box of air. And this box of air has dimensions of uh, area, uh, differential area, dA, in the horizontal direction, and a incremental or uh, differential height, dH. And so we have dimensions. We have a box. We have dimensions. We can calculate the mass of air in that box by multiplying the density times the dimensions of the box, so rho dh uh, dA. And then if we want to know the force created by the weight of the air, we have to multiply by the acceleration of gravity. So you can see that in the equation. We're summing the forces in the vertical direction or y direction and we're setting those equal to zero because this is a static box of air just sitting in the atmosphere. And it's held in place. It doesn't fall. It doesn't rise. It's held in place by the air around it and by a balance between the pressure forces on the body and the weight of the air in the box. So we write that uh, force balance. We have a, a force pushing down on the box, which is the pressure over that infinitesimal area, dA, and plus a possible higher pressure on the top than on the bottom. And we have a, just the reference pressure and uh, the differential area, dA, 
multiplied to give the differential force on the bottom. And when we do that, we have it all set up so that we can solve for the force balance on the box of air. Because the only forces on this box of air are pressure times area and the weight of the air in the box. So if you look at the equation, we've uh, taken the positive y direction as positive. We've summed the forces, P times dA pushing up, P plus dP times dA pushing down, so there's a minus sign in front of all that, and then the weight of the air, which is minus rho g dH dA. We say that all has to equal zero. Well, divide out the dA's, subtract off the P's, and you're left with the expression that dP equals minus rho g dH. And that's what we call the hydrostatic equation. Now we can take that hydrostatic equation and we can integrate it if we can assume that the density is constant. And it becomes easy to integrate. It's just the integral of dP and the integral of dH multiplied by rho g. We integrate that out at station 1 and station 2, and we get an expression we call the manometry equation. That manometry equation describes how uh, columns of fluid in a U-tube or otherwise connected to each other, if they have pressure differences on those uh, two different columns, the height of the columns will be different. And we can use this principle you maybe watch the movies for today that show how we use this principle to uh, visualize pressure distributions on bodies in a wind tunnel. Uh, one word of caution in using this equation, because there's a minus sign on the right side of the manometry equation, it would be tempting to take that minus sign inside and reverse the subscripts on the H's. And I recommend that you don't do that. The nice thing about the equation in the form it's shown is that on the left-hand side you've got P2 on the left, and on the right-hand side you've got H2 on the left. On the left-hand side you've got P1 on the right, and on the right-hand side of the equation you've got H1 on the right. And that lets you keep straight which height goes with which pressure. Uh, in a physical sense, uh, the lower pressure is going to have the higher fluid column just by the nature of the equation we've got there. And then remember that the two columns have to be connected to each other for this to work at all. Now that manometry equation is very useful and we will use it in the airfoil lab but even more useful to us will be the standard atmosphere. To develop the standard atmosphere, we can't assume constant density, and so the integral becomes more complex. Instead, we assume that pressure, temperature, and density vary according to uh, the uh, perfect gas law, and that gives us a second equation. We have the hydrostatic equation, and we have the perfect gas law. But we have three unknowns, pressure, density, and temperature. And so we need a third equation or, or some way to set a value for one of the variables. And the way it was done to develop the standard atmosphere is they set off sounding rockets starting a uh, long time ago, but especially in, during the International Geophysical Year. And they measured the atmosphere all over the Earth, and they took an average. And this graph on the right is an average of the temperature measurements they got uh, from all these sounding rockets and other measurement methods. You notice in the graph on the right, uh, there are two layers of the atmosphere that we're particularly interested in, the troposphere and the stratosphere. Notice that in the troposphere, temperature decreases linearly with altitude. And in the lower part of the stratosphere, the temperature is uh, essentially constant. And that basically covers the part of the atmosphere we're interested in. The interface between those two layers of the atmosphere is called the tropopause, and that's where the temperature model changes. 
and those temperature models of what we will use to give us our third equation to integrate the hydrostatic equation to give us a standard atmosphere. Then the results are all tabulated. You don't have to do that integral in this class. Uh, the results are tabulated in either the supplemental data package or in Appendix B of the uh, textbook in both SI and English engineering units. And uh, you can refer to the table whenever you've got a standard atmosphere uh, situation where you're using reference to a standard atmosphere. Let's see what this looks like. So in the troposphere, we have this temperature variation with altitude. And when we put that and the perfect gas law into the hydrostatic equation and integrate the resulting equation, we get this expression as the, for the variation of pressure uh, relative to the pressure at the start, in, at basically at sea level to the ratio of temperature to the uh, at any point in the altitude uh, standard atmosphere uh, to the temperature at sea level and so we can uh, calculate and tabulate those pressure values and temperature values for a lot of different altitudes and then we use the perfect gas law to get density. And of course, we use the equation for speed of sound to get speed of sound. And we build our standard atmosphere table for the troposphere. In the stratosphere, the temperature is constant. And uh, when we integrate with that constant temperature, it's a slightly uh, simpler integral we get this uh, equation for pressure variation with altitude in the stratosphere. And of course, the reference P1 and the reference H1 are at the tropopause, not at sea level. Uh, you start integrating from the start of the stratosphere, which is up around 36,000 feet. And then once again, we get density from the perfect gas law. We calculate all those values, and we tabulate. So here's what it looks like. Uh, this is a picture of the first part of the standard atmosphere in English engineering units taken from the uh, back of the textbook. And notice uh, that we tabulate temperature, pressure, density, speed of sound. We also tabulate viscosity coefficient, which we'll talk about in another lesson. All right, there's some definitions uh, related to the use of the standard atmosphere. We talk about a standard day. That means that if we say on a standard day in a problem or in a uh, customer's uh, requirements uh, statement, we're talking about that atmospheric conditions correspond to the standard atmosphere table at all altitudes or at the spe specified altitude. Uh, related to a particular requirement or question. Pressure altitude is the standard day altitude which corresponds to a measured pressure. So if we know the pressure, we can measure that with a pressure gauge, we can uh, identify an altitude in the standard atmosphere that has that pressure and we'll say the pressure altitude is whatever 9,000 feet or something like that. This is used by pilots. They can set their altimeter to a particular setting, and it will become a pressure altitude indicator. Because remember that th an altimeter uh, is just a pressure gauge. We'll talk about that in a moment. And so uh, pressure altitude is something easy for pilots to determine, and they can use it in their performance tables. Temperature altitude is that temperature on a standard day. Uh, uh, that uh, occurs at a particular altitude, and uh, that's not used very much. Density altitude, on the other hand, is used a lot because aircraft perform uh, in 
a large way depending on their actual density altitude. So pilots will typically uh, use their altimeter to get a pressure altitude. Then they'll use a thermometer uh, to measure the temperature. And from that, they'll compute density and density altitude. And they often enter tables that show how their aircraft will perform for takeoff and landing and other uh, maneuvers, uh, entering with density altitude. Density altitude is also often used for limits. For instance, at the airfield, some aircraft are limited to density altitudes of 9,000 feet, which happens often in the summertime. And those aircraft are grounded if the density altitude exceeds 9,000 feet. Other aircraft, which are a little more practical here at the Air Force Academy, have uh, a takeoff limit, a density altitude of 10,000 feet. So I mentioned that an altimeter is just a pressure gauge. And it's a pressure gauge cal calibrated in feet instead of pressure. And the way that's done is the standard atmosphere is used to calibrate the gauge dial. And the altimeter numbers on the dial face are determined from the standard atmosphere to correspond to the pressures in the standard atmosphere at those altitudes. Makes it very useful uh, in determining aircraft height because all you need is a pressure measurement. And also, there is an adjustable feature because on a given day, you won't have a standard day, and so you can adjust the altimeter to make it more accurate based on the characteristics of the particular day. And those characteristics, in particular a reference uh, pressure, are communicated uh, by weather stations so pilots can adjust their altimeters and get a more accurate reading. What's particularly interesting about the way the pressure uh, is communicated, it's communicated as the height of mercury in a barometer. And a barometer is just a manometer with one of the uh, sides closed off. And so a typical or a standard sea level reference pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury. and you get that um, interpretation in terms of pressure, if you're interested, using the manometry equation and setting one height and one pressure to zero. So that's kind of an interesting uh, side note.